Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss foreign currency exchange risk. Now, why do we have foreign currency exchange risk? Because companies or entities or individuals, they sell and they buy goods and services and currencies other than their home currency. What does that mean? Let's take a look, for example, at US companies. US companies will sell to European customers. When you sell to a European customer, you might have an account receivable in a foreign currency because you sell them the goods, they're gonna pay you in euros. Well, you have an account receivable. That account receivable is dominated in foreign currency. Also, the same US company might buy supplies from Europe. Well, they have an account payable and that account payable is dominated in a foreign currency. So when I abbreviate AR in this session, it means accounts receivable, AP and accounts payable, and FC in foreign currency. Well, this U the US companies now, they might have receivable, they might have payable, and the foreign currency could go up, the foreign, the foreign currency could go down in value, it, it might fluctuate, and this is what will create the risk. So the foreign currency fluctuate, there's a volatility in the value, which give rise to either gains, and or losses from the AP and the AR. So what do we have to do? Companies will have to find a way to reduce or minimize or even eliminate that risk. First, we're gonna see what factors influence the exchange risk. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Here are the factors that influence the exchange risk. For the CPA exam, they break them into two categories, trade factors and financial factors. And we're gonna look at each one separately. Trade factors could include inflation, income, government policies. Financial factors would include interest rate, ease of capital flow. Let's take a look at each one of them separately, real briefly, just to understand that we can answer a multiple choice questions about these easy questions. The first one is a trade factor, relative rate inflation or simply inflation. What happened is this. In an inflation, the value of the currency goes down. Well, if the value of the currency is reduced, well, think about it. You might think, well, guess what? More people would buy it. That's not the case. If the value of, the, of your currency is being reduced because of inflation, what's gonna happen? The people holding that currency, they are going to try to convert it into another currency. They're gonna run away from it. So simply put, think of the Turkish Lira in Turkey. When the Turkish Lira goes down in value, what do holders of the Turkish Lira do? They exchange it. They exchange their local currency, for example, to US dollar. Why? Because they want to maintain their currency. Simply put, if they have a million Turkish Lira, and today, let's assume the rate is a dollar, they can get a million US dollar. The fear is, if they still have that one million Turkish Lira, and the rate of the dollar becomes dollar fifty, then they're not gonna get, they are not going to get the million dollar, they are going to lose value. Therefore, what they do, they exchange it, because if it becomes dollar fifty, their value of their currency is only 666,000. So if they have a million of Turkish Lira and inflation is going up, they will exchange quickly because if they keep that 1 million of Turkish Lira and the US dollar increases, the, the value of their money goes down. They, that's why you switch. Relative income factor. Well, if an income rises in a certain country, that's going to create a demand for foreign currency. Why? Because the people living in that country, generally speaking, they have a purchasing power, their income rises. Therefore, the foreign currency should rise. Why? Because you are creating a demand, buying more goods and services. Government policies and intervention. Government plays a huge role in foreign currencies. For example, we could have a monetary policy. What is a monetary policy? It's when the Federal Reserve Bank of that country either dump more money into the market or take out more money. When they dump more money, when they print more money, 
It's called expansionary policy lead to the depreciation in the currency, generally speaking. Now, in the real world, that sometimes the opposite could happen. But if you supply more money, the the the, the currency should go down in value. Why? Because supply and demand. You you bring more money into the market more us dollar for example when the federal reserve prints more money the expectation is the us dollar would weaken and the opposite is true if the federal reserve is being restrictive it means taking money away from the market how would they do that they will buy back the dollar through bonds then it would lead to appreciation of the us dollar the fiscal policy could lead to appreciation or depreciation depending on how it's being done Generally speaking, when the when the government spends more money, they have expansionary, they could have an appreciation, generally speaking, or if they are going through a restrictive, they could have a depreciation, but it all depends on the situation. Also, the government could set a fixed exchange rate where they control the exchange rate. If they're helping subsidizing a certain product, they could influence the exchange rate. If they are encouraging export or they are encouraging import, because certain countries, they do try to encourage export. Well, what they do, if they want to encourage export, they would weaken their currency. If they want to encourage import, they will strengthen their currency. Uh, the government could also place trade barrier, which is basically not allowing foreign product to come in or make it costly to bring in foreign foreign product which would reduce the demand for the foreign currency so the government could intervene and make those changes or influence the exchange rate we have financial factors generally speaking interest rate is the higher one if you increase your interest rate if the federal government increases their interest rate generally speaking they should bring more money to earn a high return generally speaking and the, the opposite is true when you want to attract less money you would lower the interest rate and you would attract less money also, ease of capital flow, how easy to bring money in and out. Generally speaking, the currency should rise if, it, if there's an ease of movement in and out without any restriction. Why? Because the currency would be considered less risky, which, would, which should be considered a safe haven. That's why it's less risky. It should appreciate because less risk is better. That's the general concept. Now, let's start with a simple example to illustrate the concept how exchange risk is being utilized. So let's assume we have Adam International Inc., a U.S.-based company, and Adam buys raw material from Canada. So they buy from a Canadian supplier. The current exposure is one million Canadian dollar. So right now, Adam company will have an AP of a million dollar, and that AP is the denominated in Canadian dollar. And it's due in 60 days from now. Today, the spot rate is 1.35. So simply put, if Adam today decided to pay this bill, so we'll take a million divided by 1.35, and Adam will have to pay $740,740. This is how we compute this. 1 million divided by 1.35 to satisfy this obligation. But this obligation is not due today. Adam will have 90 days to pay. So here's what could happen. Adam could fear, and Adam, that could happen, that the Canadian dollar might strengthen and expect it to be one dollar to one twenty Canadian in the next sixty days. What can Adam do? Well, let's assume Adam fear are realized. If Adam fear are realized, what's going to happen is this: Adam, if they want to buy the one million Canadian, one million divided by one point two, Adam will have to pay eight hundred eighty three thousand three thirty three. Why? Because Adam will have to take the million dollar Canadian divided by 1.2. Because I can only now buy 1.2 with my dollar, not dollar 35. So the Canadian dollar strengthened. It means the US dollar weakened. So what happened, I can lose, Adam can lose 92,593. Because right now, if Adam can buy the currency now, but Adam may not be able to buy the currency now. And if he waits, and indeed the currency, the, U, the Canadian currency strengthened, how does it strengthen? The US dollar was able to buy you dollar 35. The expectation is the US dollar would only buy you dollar 20. Now also the opposite could happen. Rather than strengthening, the US currency could weaken further, but that's not my risk. If it weakened, Adam will be happy if it weakened further. For example, if the US dollar start to buy you dollar 50 Canadian, Adam is happy because Adam will have an account payable to pay. So what I want you to do is copy this data down because we're going to be using this example as I am illustrating various scenarios. So we, ha we have a U.S. company, Adam company. They have an account payable for a million dollar for a Canadian supplier. 
Now, what are my risk exposure? Let's look real quick. If you are an exporter, if you are an exporter, it means you are selling. When you are selling, you have an account receivable. Account receivable is an asset. Well, when you have an account receivable, account receivable denominated in a foreign currency you have an asset well think about it do you want your asset to weaken or strengthen you want your asset to strengthen there's therefore if you have an account receivable your risk is the foreign currency weakening simply put you want the foreign currency to strengthen why because you are expecting to receive money in that foreign currency it's the opposite of the previous example in the previous example adam was an importer Adam was buying from Canada. Well, if you're if you're an if you're a net importer, you have an account payable. You have an exposure to an account payable. Your risk now is the foreign currency is strengthening. Your risk is the Canadian dollar strengthened. That's your risk. Well, if the Canadian dollar weakened, that's good. If you're an importer, so this is a summary. Now let's look at various exposures. Dig a little bit more into the risks. So we're 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 thinking about a U.S. company versus. Europe. So the home currency is the US dollar and and think of it the, the foreign currency is European. Now, if the domestic currency appreciates, so if the US dollar goes up, it's going to benefit any US company buying stuff from Europe. So it will benefit my IP. If the US currency goes up, it will benefit my accounts payable. Why? Because I can buy more of the foreign currency. With the same token, it becomes more expensive for European to buy U.S. goods. So if you're an exporter, it's going to hurt you. Why? Because it's going to be more expensive for them to buy your goods. With the same token, if the domestic currency appreciate, I just told you, it's going to harm my account receivable. Why? Because less people will buy my goods because my goods are more expensive. Now, with the same token cheaper for us consumers and companies to buy foreign goods so when the when the when the domestic currency appreciate it will be cheaper for us companies and consumers for that matter to go to europe go on vacation to europe why because you can buy more more euros now those two statements are saying the same thing one from a liability perspective one from an asset perspective now if the domestic currency depreciates so if the us dollar weakened as an exporter, it benefits my account receivable. I'm going to be happy if I'm an exporter, net exporter. It's going to be less expensive for European to buy U.S. goods. That's good. Bring them on. If it's, if it's less expensive, they're going to buy. I'm an exporter. I'm going to be happy. You're going to see more Europeans tourists in New York City. Why? Because now the European, they feel rich. Why? Because their euros buy more U.S. dollars. And I still remember in the in the uh, during 2008 through 2010, the U.S. dollar weakened. And if you go to New York City, you would see a lot of Europeans. Why? Because the U.S. currency was depreciated after the financial crisis. The Federal Reserve print a lot of money. Remember what I told you earlier that if you put more money into the market, the, the currency will will depreciate well if the currency depreciate it's going to benefit the europeans because they can buy more us dollars so they are happy the flip side of this if the domestic currency depreciate it's going to harm my accounts payable so if i have an account payable on a foreign currency well and my currency depreciate now i need more of my currency to satisfy the obligation so i'm not going to like this so it's and it's going to become more expensive for us consumer to buy foreign goods why? Because it's more expensive. I have to use more US dollar to buy the goods. Why? Because my currency depreciates. Therefore, I buy less from Europe and then the European will buy more from me because it becomes less expensive for the European. So I just want to show it to you from both ends. Make sure you understand it because you could see multiple, multiple MCQs about this topic. What is the exposure? Who would benefit and who would be harmed? So make sure you're aware comfortable and understanding what I have on this slide. This is a good summary. Let's see if we can apply what we just learned. If a US company has a net cash outflow, because sometimes they give you this information in this language, net cash outflow, it means what? It means they have to pay. If they have a net cash outflow, it means they have an accounts payable. That's their exposure overall and accounts payable in a foreign currency. Which of the following is correct? Simply put, if they do have an accounts payable in a foreign currency, what would they like? Let's start with D. 
appreciation or depreciation of the foreign currency would be irrelevant. That's not true. Depreciation or appreciation will be relevant if you have an exposure to a foreign currency. So this is an easy elimination. The U.S. company would suffer a loss from a decrease in the value of the foreign currency. Well, if the foreign currency goes down, are they going to be happy or not happy? Well, guess what? If the foreign currency goes down, they will not suffer a loss. They would suffer. They will enjoy a gain. Why? Because they have to pay that in a foreign currency. Therefore, the U.S. company would benefit would benefit, would benefit from a decrease in the value of the foreign currency, not suffer. Why? Because they have to exchange their money into that foreign currency. That's out. The U.S. company would benefit from an increase in the value of the foreign currency. No, the U.S. company would suffer from an increase. If it becomes more expensive, they're going to have to use more U.S. dollar. Well, by the process of elimination, we have A is the answer. The U.S. company would benefit from a drop in the value of the foreign currency. Yes, they want the foreign currency to weaken. Why? Because they have to buy their currency. Well, if their currency is weakened, they will need to, they will need to put out less money. In the next session, we would look at how to mitigate the foreign currency risk. If you have a net cash outflow, a net cash inflow, an AP exposure, an AR exposure, what instrument do we need? What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, multiple choice, true, false. That's going to help you understand this topic because in the next session, we would look at your exposure and how to mitigate, how to reduce the risk of that exposure. Good luck. Study hard. This concept is important on the CPA exam.